Today, we're checking out the Mikotronics R58X Android TV box here. And as you saw just a moment ago, it can support up to 8K video playback. And this device is an absolute beast. Everything from how fast it is, the GPU, CPU combination, the amount of IOs you have, hard drive supports, RAM, different configurations. And here are just some of the specs that you're seeing right here in front of you. It's ridiculous. Like I said, 8K video, it's gonna run PlayStation 3 and Dreamcast and GameCube. You're gonna see all that emulation in a moment here. Here is the Geekbench score. Not a great single core speed, but that multi-core speed is very respectable. And you have to think about um, you know, this thing is passively cooled, right? It's a fairly efficient chip doing all this stuff, and it does beat out the NVIDIA Shield on a, pretty much 99% of the specs here. So um, you can see it's almost as equivalent to a couple generations old Samsung Galaxy phone. What I love about it is it is going to get you a rooted uh, uh, Play Store, so you can install everything from PlayStation 2 emulators to Dreamcast emulators to all kinds of things. So in this video, I'm going to show you not only on my 75-inch screen TV right here, but we'll also share the screen so you can see directly just how well this thing performs and why it's such a game changer and a possible upgrade for you and your next Android TV box. So what do you see here? You got indicator lights. You have your audio. One is a mic and one is a one is a mic, one is an audio here. <clears throat> you got USB 3, you got two USB 2.0s, one of them I'm using for the remote. You could probably put a hub on here as well. You also got the USB Type-C though, which is great. Then you have a debugging port and then the power button. Uh, both sides have nothing on them. Uh, they, it is wall mountable though, as you see you have the wall mounts on each side. And then the bottom, nothing really going on there. You got two antenna on here. You've got power in, HDMI in, HDMI out, display port as well. Remember, this thing can do up to 8K. Um, you got dual LAN ports for faster speeds. And then over here, you have um, a power port where you can hook up all kinds of things. You got ground, you got 12 volt out. You can do all kinds of things, hook up different devices with this. It even comes with a plug to help you um, connect different types of devices. So pretty much all the ventilation is just here on top and the heatsink actually touches the top of the unit. But I have to say like running it, it, it's a cool chip. Like these things don't get super hot. Like I was running Geekbench and barely got warm to the touch, like nothing even close. So pretty impressive as far as cooling, being so quiet and uh, being so, so performance heavy, like really, really good stuff. So here it is on my 75 inch screen TV. It is in fact running 4K 60 FPS. Now this thing can support up to 8K, but I do not have an 8K video. You also have a, um, you know, the limitation of the camera that it's being recorded on as well. So it looks beautiful, zero lag, zero stutter, handles YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, all the streaming platforms just fine. Here we have the PlayStation 2 emulator. Uh, I do have this upscaled a little bit and it's running flawlessly, not a single frame drop whatsoever. And uh, like I said, with all the ports in the front, you can add a hub, you can go wireless controller, wired controller. And this thing oh. is gonna do everything the Nvidia Shield could do, right? You can add your own ROMs, you can add external heart, uh, storage. It's gonna emulate just fine. Another PlayStation 2 game here, we got Mortal Kombat. This thing is a beast. It handles PlayStation 2, no problem. You're gonna see later it also handles GameCube and then everything underneath. You can easily add uh, Dig onto here, RetroArch, you know, uh, Duck Station, so many standalone emulators run on this thing flawlessly. So now let's just get, have a look at the Google Play Store here just to show you how easy it is. It does come pre-installed with Android 12. You can just go into your Google Play Store and as you see here, I can download the PlayStation 2 emulator very easily. Then all you gotta do is drag and drop your uh, BIOS file and then as well as some ROMs and you're good to go. Um, you could do everything from Redream, you could do Citra, you could do all these standalone emulators. Now, here's where it gets a little funny though is you can't actually download the Netflix app uh, I believe because it's a rooted older version of Google Play, uh, it just doesn't, it's not on there. You'll search it, you won't be able to find it. So you're going to have to open up a web browser and go to apkmirror.com. And then here you can actually download the direct installation files. And you can see here I'm downloading the uh, Netflix file. So this would be about what you'd have to do. Now, it's not perfect, um, you know, compared to like the NVIDIA Shield. This is where I'd caution people that 
you know, if you're looking for a plug and play device to give to your parents or give to somebody that's not a techie, this is where the Nvidia Shield does beat out the uh, this box here, as well as the fact of, you know, the Nvidia Shield will be pushing out regular updates. That being said, you know, I haven't been super impressed by the updates they push out. So, you know, again, if you are can do this stuff yourself and you can install these things yourself, you're way better off going this route as far as price to performance and value. Uh, but, you know, again, it's up to the user, but just want to share with you how you might get around some of these things. Because this thing, to me, I, I'm going to be using this as my NVIDIA Shield replacement, right? So you can see here running Netflix just fine. So I, I just need to know that I could still put this on my main TV. And if I want to watch Netflix, I can. I could, if I want to bring a movie file directly over, I could use a VLC player. You know, you can use Kodi. All that stuff is available to you. Um, but just so you know, it's not all plug and play. So here we go. We're running the Dreamcast emulator next here. And we have Crazy Taxi. And as you can see, it's running perfectly. Not a single stutter, not a single drop frame. And, uh, you know, very happy with the performance here. Moving along to PSP here, we're running PPSSPP emulator, and I actually have this on 3X upscaling, which is a, it's pretty darn good. I can tell you right now that Nvidia Shield does not handle it this well. And then I wanted to kind of max this out. You can see I get a few drop frames here, but nothing super significant. And if you drop it down to 2X, uh, you know, you can run this no problem. And when you think about other emulation devices out there, this is where they start to, to struggle. And so this one just blows it out of the water. The next screen here, we're going to go back to Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 on the PS2, which you saw me play earlier. But this time it's running on my computer monitor with a screen capture device. So you can see exactly how it's running with the screen share, the exact performance you're going to get. You can also see the frame rate in the upper right corner that's just running really great. And uh, the simulator is really cool. You can do all sorts of hacks and enhancements, and it handles all this stuff very, very well. And then for the last emulator test, we have... Um, we're running the Dolphin emulator. You just go download Dolphin, super easy. And this is GameCube. You're going to be able to play GameCube and Wii all you want. Again, I have this up upscaled to 720p, uh, you know, which is higher than the native resolution this thing runs on. So, and it's running fine, not a single hiccup. Super impressive. If you want an emulation device, look no further. This thing is, is amazing. And then lastly, I, you know, this is PlayStation 1 now. This is running the Duck Station emulator, and I have a bunch of hacks and enhancements on it. You can see that one of the particular ones I have turned on actually removes some of the text on the bottom of the screen here, but it just looks really good, really clean as far as the characters and things like that. But that's what I like about Duck Station is you could do all kinds of customizations within the emulator for enhancements or hacks or making the game look uh, more modern. So there you have it. There is the final review on the R58X. Amazing device. I'll put a link in the description. You have to buy it directly right now, but this thing is an absolute beast. Everything from super fast Wi-Fi or Ethernet so you could stream anything it's ready for 8K. You're future-proofing your, your, your entertainment center here. It has tons of different storage capacity, everything from uh, you know M2 SSDs to uh, flash storage, all kinds of things to get really fast uh, data rates as well as have huge collections of games on here. So you can turn on your TV and have hundreds of thousands of games at your fingertips that run lag-free, ready to go. You can also add all your favorite music. This really can be an epic media player that does everything flawlessly quickly without hesitation in conclusion it's an absolute beast a performance powerhouse but do note that it does require some programming you are running a rooted version of the play store so if you're new to all this and you're a little intimidated by that I might steer my way towards a more plug and play device, but if you know what you're getting into here, you want the best of the best, and you're willing to watch a few YouTube tutorials, get yourself started, this thing is an absolute powerhouse, amazing. I would highly recommend it. But that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.